Rotterdam is a really interesting city, and it has interested me for years. I don't quite know why, but even 20 years ago, I was fascinated with it and wanted to move there. As far back as 2002, I was asking friends and family who are traveling to Europe to go to this city and let me know what they thought of it. Since that time, I've traveled to hundreds of cities in the world across almost 60 countries, so it's quite surprising that I only visited Rotterdam for the first time just last month. I think my fascination with Rotterdam started because I was interested in life in Europe, but I was also attracted to big cities, and Rotterdam met the North American stereotype of what a big city should be. Tall glass buildings, big wide roads, and lots of cars. I'm not going to go too much into the history here, but from an urban planning perspective, the design of Rotterdam was like that of most Dutch cities that was, of course, until 1940, when huge parts of the city were heavily bombed by the Nazis. This is the famous photo from that time, showing the city center almost completely leveled. And here's what that area looks like today. On this channel, I sometimes get ignorant Americans and Canadians making excuses for their cities being crappy and car dependent by saying something like, well, American cities were designed for the car, while European cities were all built before the car with their medieval streets. It's like they seriously believe all Europeans live in the place where their cruise ship last dropped them off and have never built anything since. Of course, the whole argument is ridiculous because every major city in North America was built before the car. Here's what my hometown looked like in the 19th century. A few horse-drawn carriages, but not a car in sight. Here's what it looks like today. Crappy and car dependent. The sad part is that citizens of my hometown helped to defeat the Nazis that bombed Rotterdam, and then went and flattened their own city just so they could fit more cars. But it's true that in the 1950s and 1960s, almost all cities, even those in the Netherlands, started designing neighborhoods almost exclusively with cars in mind. I've talked about this before in my video about the failed highway plans for Amsterdam. And that's what makes Rotterdam so interesting. Here was a city almost completely flattened in the 1940s that provided a rare clean slate for planners to implement their car-centric visions of the future. The first impression you get after walking out of this stunningly designed central station is that this doesn't look like the Netherlands. If you had dropped me here and told me it was, say, Frankfurt, I'd probably believe you. But what sets Rotterdam apart from other modern-looking cities is the architecture. Rotterdam is famous for its eclectic architecture, like the curved Markhall building or the cube houses across the street, which are also really interesting on the inside, too. Wherever you go in Rotterdam, there are always interesting looking buildings, and there isn't so much a Rotterdam style of architecture, rather an anything goes policy that makes the city truly unique. Of course, the other thing that really stands out is that Rotterdam is remarkably car friendly, especially for the Netherlands. The roads are wide, and there's a lot of space devoted to the automobile. I'm not very fond of that at all. But it was still much less oppressive than any American city I've been to, proving that you can design for cars without becoming completely car infested. That emphasis on cars has a lot of negative knock-on effects on street life, however. I found myself wading across the street a lot, and there were some long crossing distance as a pedestrian. There are also a lot of parking garages everywhere too, which is an outdated 1960s idea that everyone should drive into the city centre and park when they get there. They try to fit them into the urban landscape as best as they can, but they still create these dead zones that are very pedestrian unfriendly, and the entrances can turn what should be a peaceful sidewalk into a busy crossing, with cars constantly going in and out. This definitely reminded me of cities in Belgium, with ugly Q-Park garages all over the city, Still, at least they're not surface parking lots, like much of North America. Despite the car-centric roads, Rotterdam has many pedestrianized streets, the most famous of which is Lijnbaan. These are interesting because they were not converted from car streets to pedestrian streets, but rather designed that way from the start. I really enjoyed these streets, but Lijnbaan itself was a little bit of a disappointment to me, because it felt more like an outdoor mall, lined mostly with retail and restaurant chains, rather than small businesses. 
Thankfully, there were lots of better restaurants to eat at, such as in places like Markthal and Food Holland, with food options from all over the world. We got around Rotterdam a lot of different ways in our four days there. Train, metro, tram, water bus, water taxi. About the only thing we didn't do was ride bicycles, but then this is not just bikes. Because while Rotterdam was redesigned for the car, there are still a surprisingly large number of ways of getting around without one. I made a whole other video about the interesting transportation options in Rotterdam that you can watch next if you're interested. But transit aside, I wanted to know what it was like to drive in Rotterdam. I mean, when in Rome, right? We took advantage of the Lev car sharing service, which has a fleet of Biro microcars spread out across the city. But more on that in a future video. Driving in Rotterdam was interesting. The roads are wide and there are even tunnels under some intersections. It reminded me so much of driving in Brussels, where we lived a few years ago, and where I spent far too much of my life sitting in traffic. This is how I remember Brussels. Rain and brake lights. But I guess that's not really fair to Brussels, because sometimes it wasn't raining. This oversized roundabout at Hofplein also reminded me of Brussels. We used to live near this one at Montgomery, seen here during Car Free Sunday, the only time I would dare go near this place outside of a car. Also, I'm not sure if it was due to the construction or if it's always like this, but I spent a lot more time sitting at traffic lights than I do in Amsterdam. Traffic lights seem a lot dumber here, and that definitely reminded me of Belgium. But despite triggering my Belgian PTSD, that's post-traffic stress disorder, driving in Rotterdam was actually okay. Traffic was worse than other Dutch cities I've been to, but it was still better than Brussels thanks to the quality public transport and cycling facilities. Because in case you haven't learned it yet, the only way to solve traffic congestion is to provide viable alternatives to driving. There is literally no other solution that works, and urban planners have known this for decades. And speaking of viable alternatives to driving, Rotterdam is improving its streets significantly. The hallmark project is the redesign of the Kolsingel, which looks really... cool. The Kolsingel is a major road cutting right through the center of the city. Since the reconstruction of Rotterdam, it has been a major thoroughfare for cars, but thankfully the city is repairing some of the damage done by those car-friendly policies. The new design is a more inviting and efficient street, better suited to 21st century mobility, instead of just a 1960s style car sewer. Of course, it was just a chaotic construction zone when we were there, so I'll have to check it out next time. And there is no doubt that I'll see it again, because I am definitely going back to visit Rotterdam. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my supporters on Patreon, who pay me to film on vacation while my kids say, Zit jij nog steeds te filmen? Kom op, waarom duurt het zo lang? Ik wil naar ons hotel. If you'd like to support the channel, visit patreon.com slash notjustbikes. And as I said, I will definitely be back in Rotterdam someday. I want to see some of the other neighborhoods, especially those that escaped the bombings. So if there's anything you think I missed, or if there's anything you think I really need to see, please let me know in the comments.